Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. My hero pool consists of all the heroes named Storm Spirit and Hero Spirit you, guides on Storm, other heroes, lanes, mechanics, and everything in between. I also stream, coach, and analyze your replays. To support the content, you can get one of those services or just buy me a cup of coffee on Patreon. And with all that said, let's go. Storm clouds are gathering! In the Learning Together series, we will take a hero that I play like once or twice a month and look at the game to see what we did good, what we did bad, and what's the route for improvement. Today, we're learning Phantom Lancer. Let's begin. When last picking your hero, you should often think about what pick counters both their position 1 and position 2. That was exactly my reasoning for Lancer here. Invoker gets shut down simply because Doppelganger exists and has to rely purely on right clicks. An anti-mage himself tends to still be farming his battle fury, while Lancer is already pushing tier 2s. But this is all theory at the moment, the best case scenario. It won't always go this way, bad lanes happen, gangs happen, errors happen, let's see what we can do to have the best possible game. Let's think about Invoker's kit for the early levels. His level 1 damage barely reaches 60, and he doesn't have any skills to improve it yet. That's where Lancer can begin dominating the lane. For starter items, Lancer has to make sure he has about 1 creep hit worth of damage more than Invoker, and means to heal up, since Invoker will most likely harass in between less hidden. For my early items, I rely on pure damage from stats, and opt out of Q-Link Blades, since I can do my job without it. Survivability will be provided by stout and branched tangos. Now, laning philosophy is quite simple. Continue abusing creep aggro, and make sure to always keep creeps distant from each other and invoker. This will allow Lancer to easily reach any creep for last hit deny, and threaten invoker should he decide to aim for the creeps further away. During my early levels, I ignore his harassment and focus entirely on last hits. Whenever Invoker tries to gain an edge in damage by summoning Ford Spirit, I immediately switch to take it down. He will be forced to either let it die or deny it, and either way, he has to forfeit his only help in last hitting. As for Spirit Lance, it doesn't really help me with last hitting, and it's not an efficient tool for harassment, so I restrict its usage only to help kill Ford Spirit faster or push back Invoker if he's thinking of approaching for last hits. Let's also talk possible mistakes. Eventually, I ran out of mana, and Invoker could have started using his spells. On my part, I should have anticipated that and ferried myself a salve and a mango. Clarities while laning are not a good option, because they can be dispelled from afar with a cold snap. However, Invoker didn't react appropriately, and I had an easier lane than I should have. That's mine. For the dead. No. And considering the fact that by staying in lane I can prevent Invoker from farming, that's exactly what I focus on. 
I will either force rotations from enemy supports, thus creating space for my other lanes, or Invoker will enter mid-game with very little farm. Both reasons meet our victory conditions. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Denied. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. And this concludes our early game. How well we did during that will directly translate to our team goals during the mid game. Let's recap. Mid is definitely won. Side towers still stand, so we're also doing good on that regard. Anti-mage is anti-mage and probably won't join any fights for the next 10 to 20 minutes. Considering none of the enemies are snowballing, it is time to help other lanes take towers and establish map dominance. A dominating performance. Mega kill. Hello, this is Gabe Newell. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. No. This also works in tandem with our team's power spikes. Slug should be getting his Shadow Blade soonish, and Skyplus Lich deals the most damage during mid game while enemies are still on low HP and resistances. Normally, during mid game, most teams would leave one core farming lane through jungle and send small gang teams on securing solo kills, which would translate into taking a tower down and or Roche. But thanks to successful mid lane and the fact that anti mage exists, we decided to just death ball all the way to tier 3s. As a lancer, I can play extra aggressively since they need to dedicate a lot of resources to shut me down. This allows me to frontline the tower sieges. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Regarding items, myself and the team are now building everything that improves our early fighting capabilities. Diffusal for myself, Shadowblade for Slark, and Aura items for the rest of the team. And as for mistakes, again, I miscalculate how much mana I'd be spending rotating around the map. Lancer is a mana hungry hero, and without a battle fury, should always carry some clarities for the mid game. Notice how little kills there are at this point of the game. This is because we are actively grouping up and enemy cannot respond to our pushes without major losses. Eventually, we clear out all the tier 2s, secure Roshan, which is enough of a boost to push through the high ground. Lancer again frontlining thanks to elusiveness and Aegis. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance top tower has fallen. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance structures are fortified. This is the part where I would talk about the late game, but thanks to our capitalization on snowballing, late game never happened. Which means that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Tonage. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is falling. Radiance bottom barracks are under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dark light. It happened again. Oh no. Goodness. Dominating, I guess. Ownage. My best.